Okay, I'd like to start with something that's a little bit awkward. I've looked in English history, and I found a list of very famous Englishmen uh, who agree with me that tithing should not be taught in the churches. And I think this might be a shock to a lot of Englishmen. Uh, beginning with John Wycliffe, uh, John Smythe, John Milton, Oliver Cromwell, John Bunyan, the Quakers, John Gill, Adam Clark, Charles Spurgeon, I think you've heard that name, and G. Campbell Morgan. <laughs> so uh, my viewpoint is not new. It's not, you know, it's not something that, I'm a, that I should be accused of being a heretic for saying because many have followed me. Oh, I forgot the, uh, the biggest two names of this list. They're not Englishmen, though. A man named Martin Luther and a gentleman named John Calvin. All opposed tithing at, uh, for the church. They said it's not for the church. Okay, my first point uh, is that I'm not against church support. A lot of people confuse tithes and offerings. I am fully for supporting the gospel. But when, when I'm for it, I'm for it because the New Testament uh, giving principles given to us by the Holy Spirit and blessed by the Holy Spirit are, first of all, free will. They're generous, and they're especially sacrificial. They're joyful. Uh, they're not by commandment, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. They are motivated by love for God and love for man. And I am convinced that if the church was to get back to these New Testament given principles, blessed by the Holy Spirit, that we would see a revival. Uh, there are too many people, uh, our brother just, uh, has already made it clear he doesn't agree with the position that says uh, we shouldn't teach tithing by a curse and by threatening people. I'm glad he takes that position because I'm very much, I agree with him there. But there are many people across the UK and the and US and everywhere else that are afraid to come to church. They're embarrassed to come to church. Uh, they, they think that if they come to church, they're going to go home being cursed because they have not to tithe. They go home because they feel inadequate. They've, they've been meant to feel uh, unwelcome because they can't put so much in the offering plate. So I am forgiving. But I think the word tithe should be replaced by the word sacrificial giving. Uh, the reason I say that, and I said this on CBS News a couple of years ago, uh, I make a statement that is a bold, daring statement that not one single thing taught by the church today concerning tithing is biblical. I know you don't like that, but <laughs> let me say it again. Just not it. one single thing taught by the church concerning tithing today is biblical. Now I'll go back to the definition of tithing. There are 16 texts in the Word of God that define the contents of the tithe. And in each text, the tithe is always only food from God's holy land of Israel, which God has miraculously increased by His own hand. Uh, the biblical tithes could not come from what man produced. They could not come from uh, what man increased. They could not come from Gentiles. And especially they could not come from outside the Holy Land of Israel. Now I stand by that definition and in 10 years I've, had, I've yet to have anybody prove me that that definition is incorrect. So right off the bat, the definition everybody uses for tithing I believe is wrong. But then the argument comes up, well, they didn't have money in those days. Therefore, the tithe was barter. You, you traded food for items. Uh, the book of Genesis alone contains the word money 32 times. The word money occurs 44 times before the tithing occurs in Leviticus 27. So money was very common in the Old Testament. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, money was required for sanctuary service. If you were to bring a vow, if you was to uh, pay a fine, uh, if you were to pay the shekel, the head tax, uh, even slaves bought their freedom with money. So, so money was required. By, from, if money was required in the sanctuary service, then I asked, then why was money never included in any definition of tithing in the Old Testament? We, we'll probably go round and round with, with Genesis 14 and Abraham. That's usually where everybody, the, the, the debates go to. Uh, I contend that 
in the first place, it wasn't Abraham, it was Abram. He was still an uncircumcised Gentile in Genesis 14. He wasn't circumcised till chapter 17. Uh, second, I point out that what Abram tithes uh, was not a holy tithe. It was from pagan spoils of war, which he had gathered from those who had sacked Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, the main thing I point out about Abram or Abraham is that uh, nowhere does the Bible say why Abram tithed. Uh, all of the tithe teachers, as a matter of fact, I concede that all of the commentaries that discuss Genesis 14, every commentary I've ever seen says that Abram tithed because he freely chose to do so. Well, I contend the Word of God does not say that. And I offer that since Abram was born and raised in Babylon, that he probably learned tithing from the Babylonians. And uh, the tithes in Abram's uh, time were the law of the land. This is new to a lot of people. The law of the land required that tithes of, of spoils of war be brought to your local king priest. And therefore, Abraham was not ob ob obeying a command of God. I suggest he was obeying the, the common law of the land. And that can be proven by many, many sources. Uh, but Abraham was the father of faith. Yes, but not everything Abraham did was, as, was motivated by faith. Uh, we say we should give the tithe because Abraham gave 10%. Well, uh, what do we do with this when we say Abraham gave the 90% to the king of Sodom? Do we look up our local <laughs> witches coven in London and say, here's my 90%? I'm following Abraham's example. So uh, how far do we go with Abraham's example as a, as a father of faith? We're taught that we should begin our level of giving at 10%. Sounds good. It's a good place to start. It's the good training wheels. As Randy Alcorn says and many others say, it's a great place to start. It really sounds good. that 10% is a good place to start. But think about this. In the Bible, 10% was only a minimum standard beginning place of giving for food producers who lived inside Israel, period. If you were a Jew living outside Israel, you could not tithe at all. If you were a Gentile, you could not tithe at all. If you were a carpenter like Jesus or a tent maker like Paul or a, or a fisherman like Peter, you could not tithe at all because what you produced was not the increase that God had miraculously increased from his holy land. Therefore, uh, when we, we talk about tithing, we, we completely ignore the biblical definition. We redefine it, and we use it for our own purposes. Uh, the next thing that we ignore. In the Bible, the tithe went to not the priest, but to the Levites. And the Levites were the servants to the priest. They did all the work of the temple except Minister the sacrifices and the blood, which is the important thing, right? They were the janitors. They were the mule, the skinners. They were the, the singers. They were the guards. They were the trumpeteers. They, they made the bread. They did everything except minister the blood. And the, they were the Levites. They received the tithe. And they, in turn, gave the best 1%, a tenth of a tenth, to the priest. So that's the only time that the tithe is the best. It's not even the first. It's the tenth. And, and the, uh, the priest got 1% of the tithe, but they also got a lot of other things. They got all the vow offerings. They got parts of it. So the priests were quite well, well off because of that. And uh, one of the prohibitions, well, let me go back. The, the tithing statute is not Malachi 3. It's Numbers 18. Numbers 18. And in Numbers 18, if you receive the tithe, you are not allowed to own land or property. Well, we would have a problem with that today because a lot of tithe preaching preachers on the Internet, they seem to loan, own a lot of land. In a, so how do you, if you're going to teach tithing, teach all of it. If you're going to teach tithing, don't teach 10%, teach 23%. Because in the Old Testament, the tithe was 23%. Uh, 